Hello hackers! Welcome to the continuation of the sandboxing module of Phone College. I'm Jan and today we're going to be talking about SecComp. What is SecComp? SecComp is essentially a system call firewall for Linux. Uh, SecComp is a um, fairly complicated uh, set of um, functionality that can allow a developer that is security conscious and is attempting to sandbox an application to keep it from doing bad things in the case that it gets hacked, um, to write complex rules, to disable certain system calls, to allow certain system calls, um, to filter um, system calls even based on their argument variables, um, to tweak system calls, uh, to say that you know this call under this condition should just return this value, something along these lines. Again, these are system calls, not general function calls in the program, but system calls interacting with the environment. Um, SecComp is powerful. Uh, it is inherited by children. It is able to restrict processes even run uh, by root um, with a lot of other capabilities and so forth. Um, it is the uh, kind of biggest part of a modern sandbox um, something like the Chrome sandbox and, and uh, so forth. Um, if you're interested, you can look at the documentation for SecComp. The rules can get very, very complex. Uh, it's a very cool piece of technology. And let's take a quick look at an example. Um, oops. So we have um, a program that will be SecComp soon, a program that does uh, an exec VE system call, of course, exec L is a C wrapper that sets up the exec V system call and calls it. Um, and we're going to call bin cat with the arguments argv0 is cat, argv1 is slash flag. Of course, argv0 is, you know, typically the, the, the what you enter as uh, to invoke the process into your shell. Argv1 is the first argument, and that's what cat will um, cat out. If I run this manually, here's a flag I put on my system. Um, for uh, demonstration. And of course, if I compile this um, and I run it, it works. Great. Flag received. All right. Um, now let's make this more secure. So I have a sandbox and I inserted these four lines. This is all it takes. It's very simple. This is all it takes to build in a sandbox into your process. Let's go through the lines one by one. One, we uh, created a uh, seccomp filter uh, data structure. Um, two, we initialized it with a default policy that says seccomp action allow. It's that simple. It just allows every uh, system call by default unless we say otherwise. And here, the next line, we say otherwise. We say, okay, um, uh, add to this uh, seccomp uh, filter that we're building with an action of kill, the system call exec v. So anytime, and then of course, later on, you can add additional um, uh, checks onto the values and so forth. But this says, anytime exec v is called, kill the program. So this sandboxes exec v away. Cool. So um, the fourth line, of course, applies this filter. It loads this into the kernel, does a whole bunch of stuff. This, uh, these are all library calls that, that do other crazy system calls underneath um, and um, uh, secure our sandbox. All right, um, let's now compile this new one. This won't work because we need to link in the seccomp library and this works. By the, by the way, it, in order to install the seccomp library, you need to do something like this, um, which I already did. Otherwise, you won't be able to compile this. All right. Now, we have our new and improved, just as a reminder, this is the program we're about to run. And it's going to seccomp away exec v and then run uh, exec v. And if we run this program now, it says bad system call. No luck, right? Um, Let's see what happens with an S trace. What happens with an S trace is um, if we scroll up in our program, we see that the program calls uh, several different system calls to set up the seccomp. Um, 
the important one, all of these are important, and I recommend you read up on what this does, for example. Um, this specifically stops a program that has been set comp from, um, or it makes it so that when a program that has been set comp executes, for example, a set UID program, um, the set UID privileges don't apply for um, reasons that are very, very similar to LD preload with a set UID programs. Um, this set comp uh, is what applies the filter, right? And, and uh, this is the location of our filter that we created in memory and so forth. And the pertinent thing is when we do the exec VE, um, if we immediately get killed by sig sys, Sig sys is um, a signal, specifically it is signal 31. We could, of course, uh, create a signal handler to handle si uh, signal 31 and do stuff, um, but you can also set up set comp so that it just kill dash nine your process when, uh, your, uh, when you trigger a system call that you're not supposed to. Um, and that is basically how seccomp works. Uh, one more thing, let me show you that seccomp will um, be inherited by the child. So if we S trace cat slash flag, we see that it reads in the flag from the file. We can actually uh, seccomp away flag uh, read, right? So this program doesn't execute read, but cat does. And since cat is a child of this program, we will uh, break cat. Um, let's compile this and let's run it. See, no, uh, no uh, cat, bad system call. Let's S trace it. And here, this is cat now running, right? If you scroll up uh, somewhere, here's the sec comp, here's the exec v cat, and it worked. Um, this is cat running now, and this is cat trying to read and uh, being, oh, it's cat still initializing, trying to read in libc, it's the loader reading libc, and that kills um, the process. Pretty exciting stuff, let's um, move on to the implications. Um, actually, first, let's move on to how the set comp work. That's a, a very interesting um, uh, piece of, of functionality that, that enables a lot of uh, cool stuff uh, in the kernel and so forth. Well, uh, or rather cool stuff in, in terms of security. Seccomp works through a kernel functionality called extended Berkeley packet filters. Um, BPF is actually an architecture. It is a, a, a um, uh, uh, virtual architecture. There aren't like hardware BPF executors that I know of or that are in wide scale use. Um, but inside the kernel, there's a virtual uh, machine, like a, an emulator for BPF that um, executes these filters that are built up by, for example, those seccomp library calls that we, we called, those, those library calls that built up this eBPF filter, a program that is loaded into the kernel and runs to filter system call arguments when um, the kernel receives a system call from a user process. They're also uh, used in other places. Uh, they were originally created to filter um, um, network traffic with IP tables. Uh, and since then, they've been obviously used to filter arguments, system call arguments. They've also been um, used to enable some pretty incredible in-depth tracing of a, of a system. If you're interested in playing around with your OS, um, check out this link. It's a whole bunch of really awesome utilities that um, use extended Berkeley packet filters uh, uh, along with a kernel functionality called kprobe to uh, basically hook into the kernel in a bunch of uh, really interesting places to get a lot of interesting data out. You can do stuff like trace every system call made by every single process on your machine and tell when uh, processes are opening certain files. Uh, you can um, uh, use this to profile and understand when functions are running slowly, when, you know, all, all sorts of awesome stuff. Check out that link. Uh, it's completely irrelevant to this class, but it is a very interesting um, set of tools. Um, and SecComp is another application of eBPF. 
All right, that is the intro to SecComp, a crash course. Uh, if you are interested in more SecComp stuff, of course, here I had the minimum SecComp program. Um, all of this, you can look up man pages for. If you're interested in what rules you can add, oops, do man this, and you can read all about it. You can add a lot of stuff. Um, a lot of functionality in SecComp. Um, in the next module, sorry, in the next video, we're gonna talk about how we can escape from such jails. See you then.